Hi everyone, welcome back to my desktop. Don't worry, my recycle bin still has the same name. But with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So today we're gonna be going over the NRAAS mods and doing a simple step-by-step -step tutorial because I know a lot of people are very new to The Sims 3 or very new to modding it. And I always get a bunch of questions. So I thought I'd wrap up in a nice neat little video like my basic settings and mods. So this video will be great for beginners, but it'll also have some information if you're a more advanced player as well. To get started, we have to make sure that we have all of our mods installed and ready to go. So under this PC, I'm going to click on documents, electronic arts, the Sims 3, and inside your Sims 3 folder, if you haven't made one yet, you might have to make a mods folder, but it just goes right in the Sims 3 folder. So if I click on mine, I have two inside here. I have overrides and packages. Overrides is more for your like default replacements, like your skin, your hair, and inside packages is all your regular mods. And inside my packages folder, I actually keep a separate NROS folder. That way I can keep all my NROS mods here together. So as we can see, I have a bunch of different ones installed here, but the ones we're going to focus on today are the Woohooer, Story Progression, Retuner, Register, and a little bit of Overwatch and Error Trap. You'll also see that there's a couple parts to some of these mods, and these are called modules. If you go to the NROS website and click on Story Progression, for example, it'll pull up the Story Progression mod, but underneath is a list of modules that you can install as well. Now, the mod does not need any modules to function properly, but all of the modules need you to have the mod installed. And I don't really use that much. I just use a couple from Story Progression here and a couple from Master Controller. So if you're a more advanced player, you can go through all the mods yourself and decide what you want to have in your game. But if you're new to The Sims 3 or are a viewer of mine and you kind of trust my settings or like the way that I do things, then you can just copy the ones listed here into your game. Again, not everything is necessary. And if you go back to the NROS website, you'll see there's a lot of mods that I don't even use. So everyone's play style is a little bit different. Don't forget that. Okay, I think that about does it for the building blocks. Why don't we hop into the game and see what we can do with the mods themselves? See you there. Now, when you boot up the game, just check and make sure that you have all of your mods installed and working correctly. As you can see here, I have a bunch of my NROS mods all up and ready to go. If you're having problems getting your mods to work properly, make sure you have the correct version installed. Most of these mods come for version 1.67 or 1.69. If you're not sure which version you're using, you can check the launcher or you can go by this rule. If you're using the EA app or Origin, you're probably on 1.69. And if you're using Steam or Discs, then you're probably on 1.67. In reality, it doesn't really change the game. So since this video is more for like basic settings, why don't we just start a new save file? I'm going to load up a new Sunset Valley and we're going to get started. Now, as we load up Sunset Valley, I just want to give a little bit of a disclaimer. Although I've been playing The Sims 3 for a long time and pretty much know what I'm doing, I am not a computer expert. So if you're unfamiliar with like mods or like system files or anything, just be very careful and make sure that you get some help from somebody. If you do require assistance for anything Sims 3 related, you can feel free to join my Discord and ask some questions. We're a tight knit community focusing on making The Sims 3 run a little bit better. But for any standard Sims 3 player, especially those of you who like mods and CC, this video should be no problem for you. Also, I don't recommend changing settings on an existing save file in case you mess something up. So always try these things on a fresh save first. And if you don't know what settings you like, you can always throw all the NROS mods into your folder and then just play a few days so you can see what you like and what you don't and what you might want to change. So here we are in Sunset Valley. The first thing I'm going to do to get started is just choose a household to play. It doesn't really matter which household you choose, so I'm just going to pick my favorite. So when you load your first household, you're actually going to get a pop up from the story progression mod. So let's sort this out first. So when I get started, I always click the check mark because this just gets the mod up and running. And after that, you get a pop up about the age span. So basically, the story progression mod will adjust itself based on the age settings that you already have. And the final pop up that it has is it talks about the homeless Sims. So this talks about the townies that come with a world that do not have houses. You can click the check mark to delete them, or you can click the cancel button and keep them all in town. It's really up to you. Okay, well now that we got the Keatons loaded up, I'm going to show you how to officially get into the mods. You can access the bulk of the NROS mods in one of two ways. You can either use a computer in your house, and the Keatons didn't have a computer, so I just bought them one really quick. So you can do it from the computer, or if your sim can't afford a computer, you can always zoom out and go over to City Hall. I'm actually kind of used to using City Hall, so I'm going to go with that. So if you click on City Hall and go to the NROS tab, it'll pull up all the mods that you have installed. And since we started with story progression, why don't we keep going? Now, some of these mod menus are very long and kind of a little bit tricky, so I'm going to go nice and slow and show you each option that I'm clicking on so that way you can follow along too. So starting off with story progression, when you click on the story progression tab, you're going to see a few different sets of options here. We're going to start with general options and we're going to look at the very top and we're going to see adjust speed and all stories. I'm going to click on adjust speed and personally, this really comes down to preference, but I think the mod works a little bit too fast. The default EA story progression is actually 
actually pretty slow, so the mod speeds it up quite a bit. So when I'm in general options, I just adjust the speed to slow. So you click on adjust speed, slow, and that's all you have to do. And then right underneath you have all stories. Now this refers to the upper corner where it tells you about all the things happening with the neighbors in town. So right now with the all setting, it'll tell you every time a sim in town gets pregnant, has a baby, breaks up with someone, gets a job. And with 25 households, you can see how that would get a little bit annoying. So I just like to keep it to the sims that know the family that I'm currently playing. And since I play rotationally a lot of the time, this works for all my different households too. So it's perfect. So as we go down, we just want to highlight the types of people that we're interested in hearing their stories. So if I click blood, I'm going to hear my family's stories. If I hear friends, I'll hear the ones that my sims are friends with. Same with romantic and spouses. I just usually click the ones that are just like close personal people to my sims. So I want to know about my blood, my enemies, and my friends. And then maybe romantic and spouses for good measure. But this way, it's not going to give me any information about sims that I don't know. Now these things don't really matter to me, but you can change like baby aging, adoption, red haired baby false for some reason. It also helps you change the cooldown between pregnancies, cooldown between marriage and pregnancies. So as you can see here by default, it's set to two days between pregnancies, two days between a marriage and a pregnancy. And it's got settings for a cult and stuff as well, but I don't usually get into that stuff. But if you want greater detail on a few of those things, I recommend a cotton sock. She has a really detailed story progression video that I'll link down below. Now, the second set of options that I want to go into are the lot options. If we go into here, we can see maximum size for humans and maximum size for pets. Now, I don't think this one really adjusts how many Sims you're allowed to have in your household, it just affects how like the story progression is going to populate them. One of the things I do like to do if you have the pets expansion installed is I do like to change the pet setting down to like one or two. That way you don't have a bunch of houses with a bunch of different animals. Okay, well that might have seemed a little bit intense and complicated, but that's story progression pretty much done. Now the next mod I want to show you is probably the most popular. It's the Woohooer mod. As soon as we click on this, again, we get a list of settings that can look a little bit overwhelming, but we're just going to take it nice and slow. And actually, I change a lot of things in here. So let's just start with the general tab and see what we got. Now in here, we have a bunch of little different settings. I don't really worry too much about these, but one thing that a lot of people like to unlock is the actions for teenagers. There's a lot of things that you have to tweak to enable teenage pregnancy and relationships, but it's not something that I'm interested in doing. So again, if you want to Learn more about that, I recommend a cotton socks video. But what I do want to get into is the risky woohoo because this is my favorite part of the mod. Now, the first thing I like to do is it says show risky chance in menu. I like to set that to false. I don't want risky woohoo to appear in the actual pie menu. Instead, I would rather change the actual woohoo button to be an automatic risky woohoo. But we'll get to that a little bit later, I guess. Underneath species human, we can see a few different settings here and we get the risky baby success rate. So by default, it's set by 10%. I like babies. So I always change it up to 15. And again, I don't use teenage pregnancy, but if you were using teenage pregnancy, then you could actually increase the risk for teenagers. So each time your teenagers woohoo, they have a chance of getting pregnant. My goodness. And if you didn't want to use the fertility treatment buff in the risky chance, then you can turn that off as well. Okay, back in the woohooer menu, I'm actually going to go down to try for baby. Again, you have a few different settings here. You can allow plant sims to get pregnant, but I'm just going to go into the human species. Now, I don't want to upset anybody, but as a gay man, like I don't like like allow same sex try for baby. So I always turn that off. I think it's unrealistic and just not really something that I'm interested in. But if you wanted to do it, then you could absolutely do it. Now also here that's interesting is the chance of quadruplets. So for those of you who don't know, in The Sims 3, you can only have up to a maximum of three babies at a time. So triplets, but this mod allows you to have quadruplets. So I always like a little bit of a chance. So right now it's set to a really, really low percentage. This is like a one in 10,000 chance. So I'm going to change it to one in a hundred. And again, the quadruplets Druplet's chance also stacks with things like fertility buffs, massages, all that kind of thing too. So like if you really want quadruplets, you can really make it happen. The other thing I like to do is I like to increase my try for baby success rate up to 80. By default at 75, I think 80 is a little bit better for me because again, I usually like to have babies in the sim. So I just make it a little bit easier in my game. Okay, that about does it for try for baby. But back in the original woohoo or menu, we're going to go down to woohoo and just tweak a couple more things. Again, you'll see another allow teen woohoo setting. I don't really know how all that stuff works, but you have to enable a bunch of different things to get it to work. So that's where another one of them is. So when you click on someone, it's not going to say risky woohoo, but it's going to be a risky woohoo. So the next mod I want to 
want to talk about is register. So register is another one of those mods that has a whole bunch of settings. But what we're going to use it for is actually pretty simple. So if you have the pets expansion pack installed, you might have noticed that there's a lot of animals running around. Just like I don't like too many animals in my households, I don't like too many in my world. So I'm going to click on animal control and we're going to get a list here. This tells you how many animals the game is going to spawn. So personally, I don't like having a lot of animals except cats, but I don't like to get rid of them completely. So I like to change each value to just one. So we're going to have one deer, one raccoon, one dog, one horse, and one unicorn. Now I happen to like cats, so I like to stick about four cats in my game. But again, this is all preference. Like if you're an animal player, you might want to increase the amount of animals in your world, especially horses. I know some of you love horses. Now as annoying as the animals can be, sometimes humans are just as annoying. So if you go under global roles, you're going to find some options for paparazzi. Now personally, I like paparazzi in real life. Like I would love nothing more than for someone to follow me and take pictures. Don't get any ideas. But in The Sims, if I'm playing a non-famous Sim, then I don't like the paparazzi running around. Or if my Sim gets a fame star by accident. So I'm just going to go into allow paparazzi and click it so the value is set to false. And for good measure, I changed the maximum paparazzi to zero. And if your game has already spawned paparazzi, you can just click the remove paparazzi button and it gets rid of them. And last but not least for register, I like to handle my tourists. So if you go under the register menu and go down to the tourist section, you can change your maximum number of tourists or even disallow them completely. And personally, if I'm not playing in a world adventures playthrough, then I just allow tourists to false. But again, you could increase it or decrease it however you wish. Now, the last mod I want to talk about is the retuner mod. So what I use retuner for is actually a little bit risky for your game. So be careful. I'm going to give you full descriptions of everything. I just want to be full disclosure. Just don't blindly follow this or you can end up screwing up your Sims pregnancy. Now with that out of the way, we have to get through a very complex menu. So pay attention. Under retuner, we're going to click settings, general, then it's going to take a little bit to load up. Then we're going to go to by tunable XML. Then you're going to see this list of very confusing settings. But the one that I'm looking for is Sims 3 gameplay actor systems. And this one's very close to the top. Now under actor systems, again, you're going to get a huge list of all these different things that you can do. And most of these really don't do very much for the game. It's really just preference. But for those of you who know me, I think you know what I'm going to go do. So I'm going to go down to the pregnancy tab. And once we click the pregnancy tab, we're going to have another list of confusing things. Now, the risky thing about this menu is that if you change any of these settings with an active sim who's actually participating in the system, then it's going to screw everything up. So for example, the reason I chose Justine Keaton here is because she's pregnant. And because she's pregnant, I don't want to go into any of these settings. And this means for any sim in your world. So if you change any of these pregnancy settings and have a pregnant sim living in any household, it can actually corrupt their pregnancy. So what I'm doing now, I'm doing assuming that I have an empty world of pregnant sims. And the same goes for mat leave. I'm going to be changing some maternity leave settings as well. And again, if you have any sim who's currently on maternity leave, this can really mess it up. There are ways to fix it, but I would rather you just not do it. But ignoring all of my warnings, let's go through some of these. The first thing is that you can change your baby having a random chance of a cult mutation. So you can change this to more than zero. I don't like doing that personally, but if you're an occult player and playing with normal sims, then maybe this would be a setting for you. Two things that you can do in this mod that are totally safe though, are changing your chance of twins and your chance of triplets. So as you saw earlier, I actually changed my chance of quadruplets to 1%. So I'm going to change my chance of triplets to 3% and my chance of twins to 10%. So the game doesn't really like giving you multiples, but I like having multiple babies. So I like to increase it quite a bit. Anyway, on to the shorter pregnancy thing. So I always like having a shorter pregnancy in my game. And in fact, I just like to cut the pregnancy time in half because that makes changing the mod much easier. So as we can see, the hours of pregnancy is set at 72. So let's say I want to cut it in half to 36. Again, I wouldn't normally do this with Justine Keaton being pregnant, but I'm just going to do it for showing you. So I changed the hours of pregnancy to 36 and then the hours to show fully pregnant to 18. As you can see, I'm just kind of going down the list and cutting these numbers in half. Hour to show pregnant buff, let's change it to 12. Hours to start contractions, let's go down to 34. Hours to start pregnant motives, down to four. So again, as you see, I'm just going through all the pregnancy settings and just cutting the time in half. Because as you go down the list, you can see things will start to not make sense and that can screw up your game. So if I change the hours of pregnancy to 36, but the hours to start walking pregnant at 40, then they're not gonna get that pregnant walk until after they give birth and like, is that gonna mess it up? And again, you just don't wanna risk it. So I'm gonna change it down to 20. And again, the last setting I wanna talk about is just the pregnant days off. So if I go into this one, I'm just gonna cut it down to two. So that way we're not 
not home for a week. And again, you might just want to change these based on lifespan settings. Like maybe you want to keep the mother home for like a year. Maybe you're playing a storyline that's not set in the United States so you can have like a longer maternity leave. But yeah, Retuner does a lot of other things too, but I'm not a big expert with that one. So I just like to tweak the little things that I usually use for my game. And babies are a big part of my gameplay, so it's no surprise that's the settings I go for. And to kind of end off this video, I just want to go over a couple of the simpler ones for you. So first things first, Error Trap doesn't even show up on here because Error Trap just works in the background on its own. You'll see little things in the corner pop up once errors happen and if the mod is dealing with it. But it's not really something that you actively do. So let's go into Master Controller. Master Controller is the mod. It's kind of like your MCC Command Center mod where you can take a lot of control of your game in the moment. Like if I go under Sim, then I have a bunch of different settings here. Like if I go under Advanced, then I can reset my Sim. That just kind of like if they're having any sort of error or they disappeared or something. I can also use Master Controller to go into Pregnancy, End a Pregnancy, Pause a Pregnancy, Resume a Pregnancy. So that might be helpful if you wanted to change your pregnancy settings and you just wanted to get rid of a pre-pregnant Sim. I don't know, I've done that before. You can also use this mod to edit your Sims and create a Sim. And underneath the Town menu, like if your game is lagged up or something, you can go under Town and click Reset Everything and it does a full town reset. I find this helps a lot, especially with the Island Paradise expansion. And last but not least is the Overwatch mod. So underneath Overwatch, you're going to see immediate settings. And in here, you can actually save and export all of your NROS settings. So you know how we just changed a bunch of settings for our game? So I'm just going to go into Overwatch, Immediate, and Export Settings. And underneath Export Settings, you're going to see a list of all the mods that you have installed. So today, we made some adjustments to Woohooer, Story Progression, Retuner, and Register. And let's say I wanted to just load them up in the future nice and quick and easy. Then I could just export everything in one file. So if I have these mods selected and click the check mark, I could just type in something like Base Settings. And once that's all saved in, you're going to have the settings exported. And if if you're in a new game, you just click on import settings. And when you click on import settings in Overwatch, you can click on the same four mods and then it's gonna give you an option of the ones that you have saved. So here we have my base settings. So I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna load them up. Well, that's about all I wanted to say. So why don't we just get back to the Keatons here and do a little wrap up. At the end of the day, NROS mods are just there for you to add some customization to your game. So if you're not having any specific problems, there's no need to run and install everything. But of course, some people really enjoy modding their game and like to try out new things too. So I wanted to give like a little bit of an introduction to this without going into too much detail, but still giving you the tools you need to at least get started. And like I said, if you want further information on any of these mods, I really do recommend a cotton sock. She has a couple videos. I'm going to link them down below, but she plays a lot of Sims 3 and she can get things really precise down to the wire to what she wants to do in her game. But don't bother her with questions. If you want questions, just leave them in the comments or you can join my discord and we can help you out. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video or at least found it useful. If you did, give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe for some more Sims 3 content. I'm going to leave this video up as a reference so anytime that you're starting a new save file and just want to try out something new or maybe get some settings figured out, this video will be timestamped so that way you can just click on the mod that you need the most help with. And if you do want to see more NROS tutorials, I can go into greater detail in a future video. So if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks again.